The following podcast is part of the Embassy Row Project's Green Conflict Minerals series based on the latest book by Embassy Row Project founder, James Scott, entitled Green Conflict Minerals. The mad dash to net zero is about to get rough. For more information about the Embassy Row Project's Green Conflict Mineral Briefing series in Washington, D.C., visit embassyrowproject.org. Lithium is the key component of current and potential future renewable energy storage solutions. As such, it is expected that its global demand will increase rapidly as more and more of these solutions are brought into production, and their use expands. From electric vehicles and mobile devices to industrial-scale energy storage, while the current lithium consumption for green energy applications represents around 30% of total lithium consumption, it is estimated that the global demand will increase by 40 times over the next 20 years. Because of this rapid increase, lithium production is expected to increase significantly, most likely doubling by 2025 due to the expansion of existing operations and new developments. However, after 2025, the demand is expected to outpace the production, and by 2030, it is expected that lithium production will only meet around half of the demand. Lithium is exploited in two main forms, brine and spodumene. Brine deposits are located in arid areas in South America and northwestern China and produce lithium carbonate directly or process lithium carbonate to produce lithium hydroxide. Spodumene is a lithium aluminium silicate mineral, mostly found in Australia, Zimbabwe, and China. The recent development of spodumene mines made Australia the world's largest lithium producer. Although the region nicknamed the Lithium Triangle in Argentina, Chile, and Bolivia still remains the largest regional producer of lithium, and contains around 60% of known lithium reserves. However, lithium processing facilities are mostly concentrated in China. Almost 60% of lithium products come from Chinese facilities, and China has been investing heavily in the lithium mining and processing sector. Over 80% of lithium hydroxide used in EV batteries is produced in China, mostly relying on supply from Australia and Chile. The Chinese Tianqi Lithium Company acquired a 24% stake worth over $4 billion in Chilean company SQM, the world's largest lithium producer, which controls mines in the South American Lithium Triangle, and China has invested heavily in the development of lithium extraction in Zimbabwe with Chinese acquisitions of over $700 million, with planned investments of another $500 million. Zimbabwe has the fifth largest lithium deposits in the world and the largest in Africa. In the long term, new technologies are expected to allow lithium extraction from sedimentary clay rocks simpler and more energy effective than extraction from spodumene and waste rocks. Expanding the scope of exploitable lithium deposits, while direct lithium extraction from brines is under development, which would significantly simplify lithium production, all these emerging technologies could contribute to a more rapid increase in lithium production, while significantly reducing capital costs and environmental impact. Lithium projects are also very sensitive to climate stress. Their operation requires large amounts of water, and there is a correlation between lithium operations and an increase in drought conditions in the region. From a broader strategic point of view, it is clear that rapid investment in new lithium production and processing technologies is required to avert or minimize the expected global supply gap. While most of the global lithium reserves are located in stable, democratic countries, there is an increasing dependence on Chinese processing capacities. And it is expected that in the likely case of a global lithium shortage, China would prioritize its domestic production. Recent Chinese investments in international lithium production suggest that China is acquiring a strategic position that will allow it to accomplish just that and secure enough resources for its economy while avoiding competition in the global market. If you enjoyed this podcast, please like, subscribe and leave a comment. For more information about James Scott's book, Green Conflict Minerals, the mad dash to net zero is about to get rough visit Amazon.com or the Embassy Row Project website. For more information about the Embassy Row Project's Green Conflict Mineral Briefing Series in Washington, D.C., visit embassyrowproject.org.